Hi, it's just Paul Daniels here again. Uh, let's see, we're just doing a standard iPhone 6 screen replacement today. I know everyone's seen these a million times, but no harm, I'm just adding another one with a bit of commentary on the side. Hopefully, nothing unusual in this one. Hopefully, it's just straightforward. Fortunately, I don't have much else to do today. I'll maybe clean my office. <laughs> Monday. Uh, no one likes Mondays. What are we up here? Okay, battery seems fine. Doesn't look like it's been tampered with at all. It looks like it's an original apple. Okay. So we get the joy of being the first one to replace the screen on this. Shakes a bit bad today. Not enough sleep. Mark the screws on the screen, hold down. The last thing we want to do is give ourselves a long screw damage by accident. I really turn my shakes into major spasms, especially for a Monday. Doesn't look like there's any corner or chassis damage, so that's nice. Okay, make sure there are no screws. Occasionally you don't really notice that there's a screw loose. So it always pays to turn it over, give it a bit of a shake out, just in case. These uh, brown things are just cheap magnetic backing pads. Oops, no, that's that screw. Uh, you can get them from the local surplus store or whatever. Often sold as printable fridge magnet pads or something like that. Anyway, they're really useful because they, they have enough magnetic, uh, magnetic hold to stop things moving around too much, but not too much. But you can't pick them up again with a uh, magnetized screw tip. Uh, put these bits off. I'm doing this a little bit of out of, out of order, which isn't my favourite metal spudger. I've had this thing for a couple of years now, and I've not been able to find a good replacement just as a backup. Uh, the thinness of this end is what's most crucial. I've bought several others and they're all too thick at the end. But this one, it comes down to a very nice fine point. It's blunt, so at least I don't cut anything, uh, but it's still strong. So uh, I'll be really sad if I damage or lose this one before I get a replacement on hand. So it screws out. Look after you do quite a few of these screens, you do develop your own preference for how you do things, how you align the screws on the pad here, and things like that. Everybody's got a different preference. And me, being left-handed, tends to do it backwards to what everyone else does. Fortunately, at least, um, with these iPhone 5 and 6s, I can do it all on the pad. Uh, so I used to get these off with hot air, with the hot air gun, and then slowly peel it off, but I just found it easier with this sputcher to jam it in at an angle and roll it out. It doesn't do any damage. Certainly a lot quicker. Alright, let's get this off. Slide it 
a bit of the microfilm part, separate it from the adhesive, just gently, gently. There we go. Again, no damage. And so the replacement. Now, replacement does not have the guides, so I'll have to knock those guides out. I notice some people use super glue to put the guides back in, but uh, you got to be really careful if you do that because the super glue can fume up and you'll put a nice white frosty coating over all the optics. And usually it only bonds to the optics if um, right, the static is stopping that from coming off my finger. The cloudiness only tends to bond if it's uh, got some contamination on, on the glass but you know, because you don't know what's happened to these in the past whether they've been handled or what it's not really something I want to risk okay, now I'm going to need the compression pads off these two so I have to put this to the side and we need a new paper towel because that one has got bits of glass on it We really don't want to put our new screen down on a paper towel with glass on it, or else we'll end up with a nice scratch screen. Right. And we make sure we've got nothing on the back of this. A number of times I've had phones come in here from elsewhere and they've left a spot of grit or something on there and it leaves a nice white hot spot on the screen. So I've just had too much coffee. <clears throat> Man, of course, always make sure you do not have that stuck under the back panel. That also causes a great deal of damage on some fans. It sounds obvious, but it's surprising how many that come in with that. Some days I have no trouble at all with this, but Still got its stickiness on it, so we can put that back in without having to create any uh, adhesive strips down for it to hold on to. Goodness gracious. Trying to put the diffuser, the optical sensor, back in. I haven't pulled it out of this screen because I took this one from another one. And then I just realized that that was probably from an iPhone 5, I think. Yep, wrong one. <laughs> so we'll have to take it out of here. And I want to put glass on that. Bring back my old one. You don't really, really have to take these out, but 
I get a little bit pedantic about this. Like all the machine, all the screens that I've replaced that have been prior replaced before have never had this in it, and I don't think they've ever shown any issues. But yeah. right, fun and game. Come on, no, it's not gonna come out. There's gonna be a better pair of tweezers. Sometimes these come out. Sometimes these come out easy. Not too often. Uh, goodness gracious. There we go. Trick is just trying to get to lift up. guides back in. So if anyone knows a glue that isn't super glue that I can put these back in with um, without making a big mess everywhere, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, this is a bit that requires a bit of just getting to know the feel of things. You gotta swivel around to feel things lock in. Okay, that's in. If you don't, you end up with everything protruding out of place, and then when you try to put it back into the display, uh, into the chassis, it doesn't fit properly. The microphone sounds wrong, the speaker sounds wrong, all sorts of dramas. Like I said, you get a feel for when it's right. It's just something you have to practice on. Not really tightening those screws up too much. Just a light nip, make sure they're bedded in, but certainly not screwed so far that they strip and then you back them off and put Loctite on. Yeah, that's always a good way. Alright. You just have to take these compression pads off this phone. I mean, this is another one of those things that you don't have to do it. I see plenty of phones without it done. But it's nice to do it. When I say it's nice to do it, it's because you know it's been done properly. All the all the small but time consuming items are off the list. And you know it's a couple less problems that the client might have with their phone later. Because like without these, if your phone takes a bit of a knock, or a couple of knocks, and the screws are getting slightly loose for whatever reason, at least these pads will stop the connectors coming out. To be fair, it doesn't seem to be much of a problem on these iPhone 6s that I've seen, but certainly on the iPhone 4s it was a very common fault. Okay, so then, yep. 
I do like to hear a nice click in with these connectors. If I don't get a click, no worry, I can't feel a click. It always leads to me with a lot of doubt. And most times, if I ignore that doubt and I power it back up, sure enough, I move the screen around a little bit, I'll start seeing lines or other things with bad touch to indicate you did not put that in properly. Right. Most of the time they go in properly quickly, but other times you can sit there and spend a, quite a few minutes trying to get it right. You just have to walk away from it, come back at a different angle or something after a minute or two, and then it usually goes in just right. Ah, ha, 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 ha. These screws are giving me a nightmare. Um, one thing that I get curious about is uh, you get these little rubber socks or sleeves that go over the end of the screen where the pentalobes go in. Except I don't get them too often. It's maybe one out of every ten screens I, I get them. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why it's not all of them. There only seems to be some of them. And it's not because they're being forgotten off the previous screen repair or something. Because quite a few times it will be entirely brand new phone just like this one and they just don't happen to be in there so I don't know what the deal is with that yeah I probably should have added those before I know what and here comes the fun bit I'm trying to remember which way they go and they are they do have an orientation because I'm not sure if that's just because they Originally were um, unipolar, they go anyway, and then just when they get crushed down, they say, oh man, I can't even work out what the heck that one is. Uh, this is my patented screen holder. Uh, what has happened to you? Uh -huh. Just rolled up in itself. Marvellous. Jolly good old chap. Okay. Ooh, that was unusual. Let's see if it actually turns on. Oh, good. Got the apple screen. Excellent. Put the pentalobes back in. Sometimes I get a bit scared about putting the pen lobe straight back in after it's fired up because I've had a couple of phones where after they've booted up they all of a sudden start getting real hot and it's usually a phone where there's been a tiny bit of water damage or it's been knocked really badly and obviously something decides it's going to have a short circuit or a partial short after I've messed around with it and then it's a great big rush to get the pen lobes out uh, where have we got? It's looking good. Thankfully there's no screen on the back there for you to see anything. I also like to check that uh, these things charge properly. This is going to be upside down for you guys, but um, this is just a USB current meter. It's also a volt meter and a uh, power consumption. Okay, let's plug this in. Okay. This one, about 950, that's where I want to be. That indicates to me that it's everything's good. I'm down at 400 or whatever at the, let's see what I'm at, 43% charge. If I was less than that, I'd be concerned there'd be something going wrong. But this looks good, customer will be happy, and uh, hopefully no more dramas.